Father, in the name of Jesus, ancient of days, the I am that I am. Thank you for this opportunity to speak your word. Thank you, Father, because we know that tonight you will baptize us with fire. You sent your word, and your word heals, and your word delivers. Tonight, send your word to heal us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Is somebody ready for fire tonight? Is somebody ready to receive fire tonight? I want to use this privilege to thank God for this opportunity to stand here to speak the word of God. And at the same time, I want to thank our most esteemed father, Daddy Gio, for this opportunity and our mommy for this opportunity. Daddy, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. And I also want to thank all our fathers that are seated here for this opportunity. The Lord bless you, daddies and mommies, in Jesus' name. To the congregation, if you are ready for fire, lift up your right hand and shout fire. Tonight, the message is titled, The Rod of fire the rod of fire and i'm going to be taking my test from the book of psalms psalm chapter number 23 i'll read verse 4 he said ye though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me Tonight, somebody here tonight, you will be comforted by the rod of fire. You didn't hear me. I said the rod of fire will comfort you tonight. What is the rod and what is fire? And I'm going to take my definition from the understanding of a shepherd. The rod is an instrument of a shepherd used for directing correcting and defending the sheep the instrument of a shepherd that is used to direct to correct and to defend the sheep and then what is fire i want to take the definition of fire from this contest it is the manifestation of god's power fire is the manifestation of god's power how do I know? In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, the scripture says, He said, For our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. In fact, there is hardly any place in scriptures where God manifested. There is hardly any place in scripture where God moved without a deposit of fire. For instance, in the book of Genesis chapter 4, the Bible says that God accepted the sacrifice of Abel by fire. In Genesis chapter 19, if you read the whole of Genesis chapter 19, the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah by fire. If you read Exodus chapter 13, verse 21, Exodus chapter 20, 13, verse 21, God was, the, was with the children of Israel as a pillar of fire by night and as a pillar of cloud by the day. In 1 Kings chapter 18, read from verse 37 to 38. 1 Kings chapter 18, reading from verse 37 to 38. The scripture records that fire fell on the altar that Elijah built to prove the almightiness of God. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 2, in Malachi chapter 3 verse 2, the Bible records that he is the refiner's fire that purifies. And then when you go to Matthew chapter 3 verse 11, in Matthew chapter 3 verse 11, he is the one that will baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And then you move from there, you go to Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 and in verse 3. 
Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 3, the Bible says that even the manifestation of the Holy Ghost baptism, it came by fire. The Bible records, it said, there appeared a cloven tongue as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And then finally, even when God is going to destroy the wicked people who refuse to repent, the Bible also records that it will be done by fire. In fact, I love the way 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7 put it. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, he said that this word is reserved unto fire. So what then is the rod of fire? The rod of fire, therefore, is the rod that carries fire. Somebody say fire. Say fire. The rod of fire is the rod of of the manifestation of God. What is the rod of fire? The rod of fire is an instrument of God's divine power and authority in the life of a man who is sent to achieve a command for God. It is the proof of God's calling upon a man. How do I know? How do I know that the rod of fire is an instrument of of the proof of God's calling upon a man. Moses, after he considered himself and all the numerous disabilities around himself that suggest that he could not be a leader, he asked God a question. What proof will you give to me that will be, so, that will be enough to prove that you have sent me? And God told him, if you read your scriptures in the book of of Exodus, God told him, Exodus chapter 3, chapter 4, God told him, number one, I will be with you. Number two, he said, tell them in case they ask you, I am that I am has sent thee. And number three, he said, what, in case they don't believe that you sent me, he said, tell them the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent thee. He said, what if they don't believe? He said, stop there. No more question. What is in your hand? He said, it is a rod. He said, put it on the ground. He put it on the ground. He became a serpent. He said, pick it up again. He picked it up. He became a rod. And he said, just in case you, that is not enough, put your hand in your pocket. He put the hand in the pocket and he removed it. He became leprous. And he put it back again. He became restored again. And God was trying to communicate. He said, just in case they don't believe your explanation, they will believe your manifestation. Because the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 19 is that the endless expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the true sons of God. Tonight I pray for somebody you will manifest tonight. Enough of explanation. I said tonight you will manifest. The road of fire what is the significance of the road of fire in the life of a believer? What is the significance of the road of fire in the life of a believer? Number one, the road of fire is a weapon of victory. How do I know? In Exodus chapter 17, read from verse 19 to 13. The Bible says that the Amalek Amalek, they wage war against the Israelites. And Moses specifically said to Joshua, he said, speak some men. Go to the battlefront. Fight. He said, but for me tomorrow, I will stand on the mountaintop with the rod of God in my hand. And the Bible begins to record that as Moses' hands were lifted, victory was sure. Tonight, I speak over somebody here. You will have victory by the rod of fire tonight. In fact, when I was reading that scripture, in those days, I thought that it was ordinary hand that Moses lifted that brought about the victory. It was when I began to read recently, I saw that it was the rod of God in the hand of Moses that was lifted that produced the miracle. Tonight, you will not lift ordinary hands. I said you will not lift ordinary hands. The rod of fire is a scepter of authority. How do I know this? The Bible is speaking that Moses was afraid 
because of the scenario that happened around him and his brothers and he ran away but when he had a rod of fire he was able to face pharaoh who was a terrible man i decree over somebody here tonight it doesn't matter what you have been afraid of by the rod of fire tonight you will face your enemy and you will defeat them in matthew chapter 21 in matthew chapter 21 verse 23 the Bible begins to record that 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 Josh, that I mean that Jesus, the, 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 the high priest and the elders, they gathered around him and they were asking some questions. He said, By what authority do you do the things you do? And who gave you that authority? That is where I know that authority must be given. You don't just assume authority, authority is given. Tonight, God will give you authority. The rod of fire, it is also an instrument of correction. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 15, Proverbs 22, verse 15, it said, foolishness is in the heart of children, but the rod of correction will drive it far. The rod of fire is also an instrument of defense and comfort. In Psalm chapter number 23, where I read, verse 4 he said though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil the reason i'm not afraid is because i have a defender the reason i'm not afraid is because the rod of fire is with me he said though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i shall fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me somebody here tonight the lord will comfort you the rod of fire is also an instrument of deliverance how do i know moses in Exodus chapter 14 Exodus chapter 14, reading from verse 1 to 31, the Bible records that when Moses came face to face with the Red Sea, it's as though all hope was lost. And I can just imagine Moses was saying, Anyhow it be, I don't try. Even though I hear we die, I don't see try. But God was not over, I was not over him with him yet. And God looked at him. He said, Take that rod in your hand and stretch it upon the waters. And the water parted, and they walked through it a dry ground. I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight. Every challenge confronting you tonight by the rod of fire, they will give way. There is no limitation to the rod of fire. I don't know why Moses did not exercise that authority when he came near the waters. He thought that the rod was only good in Egypt. He, he didn't know that the rod has no limitation. Tonight, there is no limitation to your rod. Because why the rod of fire is an instrument of deliverance for God's people, the same rod of fire is an instrument of destruction for the enemies of God. Yes, because it was that same rod that parted the sea that brought the sea together that, that destroyed the enemies of God, the enemies of the people of God. Tonight, every enemy of your life shall perish in the name of Jesus. Is it possible for a man to lose his rod? Yes. Then what happens if a man loses his rod? Number one, he loses his authority. Number two, he loses, he loses his relevance. Number three, he loses his boldness. Number four, he loses his fire. Tonight, you will not lose your fire. The Bible is speaking in the book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 20. Judges chapter 16 verse 20. Something was saying. He said I will shake myself as I used to do. I will shake myself as I used to do. He never knew that the, the fire in his road has depleted. Tonight, whatever we make your fire to go down, the Lord will have mercy on you. I want you to take note of this. A disobedient man that cannot resist sin cannot retain fire in his rod i tell that again a disobedient man that cannot resist sin cannot retain fire in his rod 
What would have happened? I was imagining. What would have happened if Moses has lost his rod? What would have happened if something had happened to Moses? A whole generation would have perished because of that kind of ignorance. Anything that will make people to perish because of you, it will not happen in the name of Jesus. In Genesis, in Genesis chapter 38, Genesis chapter 38, reading from verse 12 to 30, the Bible speaking concerning the man called Judah. In the quest of seeking sexual pleasure, Judah lost his staff, his rod. He lost his rod of authority as an exchange in the hand of a woman. And let's take note of this scripture. Genesis chapter 38, verse 18. Number one, the Bible records that Judah gave his rod to the woman. And then secondly, he slept with the woman. And thirdly, the Bible says, the woman conceived by him. That is why I know that every time a man begins to double into sin, sin will always conceive a thing. And the Bible speaking in the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 23, he said, the wages of sin is death. As much as it is good to talk about the rod and fire, I want to tell us that it is also good to talk about the maintenance culture of the rod of fire. Because if you don't maintain the rod, if you don't maintain the fire that is in your rod, you can lose the fire and you are just going about with an ordinary rod. So how do I maintain the fire in my rod? Number one, you must be fervent in prayers. Number two, you must have faith. And then number three, you must be consecrated. There is always a consecration for every advantage that God gives to you. And if you are not ready for that consecration, where your consecration stop, that may be where your fire will stop. But I pray tonight your fire will not go down. In conclusion, God through the hand of Moses performed many miracles and signs, fearful signs, not for showmanship, not so that Moses can be called the most senior prophet in the land. It's so that, number one, God can prove his almightiness. And number two, that God can bring about salvation. How do I know? In Exodus chapter 8, verse 1, the Bible, talk, the Bible was talking, he spoke about Moses. He said, now you have seen all the signs. You have seen all the miracles. Now go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they might serve me. In every miracle, there is always salvation inside. In every agenda of God, there is salvation in fact, in every deliverance, there is salvation. In every success, there is salvation. Anything that seeks to take you away from God, it is not from God. Tonight, I want to speak to you. As our Father comes to minister tonight, just in case you have not given your life to Christ, it is the right time for you to run out. When our daddy is set on this podium and is crying for salvation, do not harden your heart. I pray that in the name of Jesus, you will not harden your heart in Jesus' mighty name. Can we be on our feet as we pray this prayer together? You are going to lift up your voice. In, in Psalm chapter 125, verse 3, Psalm 125, verse 3, the Bible says, he said, for the road of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Let the righteous put forth their hand unto iniquity. You are going to pray tonight. You will say, my father, do not allow the road of the wicked to prevail over my life, to prevail over my family, to prevail over the church, to prevail over Nigeria. If you are here tonight, can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray? The road of fire. Can you pray? Talk to God. Finally, you are going to lift up your voice. Say, my father, baptize me with fire. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and cry. Baptize me with fire. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. So dear Lord, tonight, let your fire spread among us. Let us be many that we carry fire from this altar. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every power that is trying to wage war against us. By the power of the rod of fire. We are victorious in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Now put your hands together for Jesus.